Welcome to another edition of the Smoke Box for Be Real TV. I am Be Real, aka Dr. Green Thumb. I prescribe highness for you. Um, welcoming back one of our good friends to the Smoke Box, my man, comedian Felipe Esparza, up in the up in the whip. What's up, everybody? Felipe Esparza here on the Smoke Box TV with Be Real. And E Zone and CJ C minus. C minus. That's right. He's older now, so he's like um, 100 minus. <laughs> How you been, Poppy? I've been good, man. Surviving this pandemic lifestyle. I see that, man. Um, you've been working a lot. Yes, bro. I've been working a lot um, after that pandemic, but when the pandemic was first started, it was tough. It was bro. tough for everybody. Yeah, bro. man. Yeah, for the first time in my life, my cousin from Mexico were sending me money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that had to, bro. <laughs> that had to be interesting. Hell yeah, bro! Like they had to send back old clothes I sent over there, but like Sergi Tacchini suits. How many pesos? <laughs> like a hundred pesos. That's one thing about I noticed, bro, about white people, man. That white people always have money. Cause they never send money back to Germany to anybody. No. <laughs> or Scandinavia. <laughs> or Scandinavia. Oh. You never hear white people say, oh man, my family's suffering over there in Ireland. My little, they're gonna lose my little ranchito over there. No, you, you don't hear that. No. Yeah. What do you hear? Fuck those fools. <laughs> you, know, you know what? They didn't make it. <laughs> no, they didn't make it. They got killed by the soldiers. <laughs> hey, um, I gotta say. Um, we found ourselves in the same place at the Eric Andre show, and it was good to see you there. It made me feel slightly, slightly more comfortable because I know the crazy shit that happens over there, and I knew some crazy shit was about to happen with us. No, no. you know. But to see you involved, I was like, okay, the homie's there. I know it's gonna be some shit, but he's there, so I feel all right. Yeah, I, um, you got down with a few episodes down there, right? You you were there for like how how long? How many episodes did you rock that in that season? Um, season six of Eric Eric Andre, which is gonna come out next summer, I was on every episode, and the la the the season five, I was on half of the episodes. But what, but how I got on the show, bro, was this: I, I was liking that show, and I said I gotta be on this show. This show's ridiculous. It's fucking crazy. This is my style low budget so <laughs> i was on the road bro in modesto california stoned as fuck bored as fuck and um i just took all my clothes off and i put on my underwear real tight no, no, tarantaras, no huh? tarantaras and i stood in front of the lamp with my joint and i kept turning turning the lights off and on <laughs> for like right. five minutes da, da. and i said eric andrew this is my audition tape <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he was on it immediately. Yeah. Yeah, because they do wild shit. I remember the first time I seen the show. Like, one of my favorite things is when he fucking freaks out and tears up the fucking desk and yeah. all that shit. It's <laughs> one of the funniest things. But when when <laughs> the whole the whole shit with Flavor Flav, that was fucking hilarious. And that's, that's sort of what... I mean, I had been into the show, but, like, catching that episode, I was like... Oh my God! If we get on, this is this some crazy shit's gonna happen like this. Dude, I know you're not prepared for these things. Like I'm, when a guest shows up, they hide me because I'm a surprise guest too, and um, they practice all these stunts all day. But the, I, you gotta give it up for the stunt, the people who are actually in the stunts, because I couldn't put up with something like that. Like yeah, we had a guest. I think it was um Ryan Felipe. And the, the the sketch was these two soldiers come down from the ceiling butt naked. And they were called CO CO CO69. CO69. And these two guys were both butt naked, bro, in a 69 oh. position. Oh my god. Oh. Now imagine you're an actor. And you've been trained actor. And you you've been trained with weapons. And you gotta hold it together. And they tell you, okay, man, what's my scene? You're gonna you're gonna have your face on another man's crotch, up in the air until you're ready to come down. You gotta be pretty open, fucking minded, <laughs> ready to do the fucking job, right? 
Oh my yeah. god, I would have fucking freaked out had I seen that. Like, because that was one of the things where, like, all right, look, we don't have to beat no one up if no one runs around naked around us. You know what I mean? No dicks around, like flying around. Won't have to beat nobody up. Anything else is cool, you know, because we seen some of that shit, and that's just crazy. Sometimes, like, yeah, like or, or um, you might not look around and you sit down and the fucking chair explodes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that shit is like he he's got one of the most funniest, innovative shows. But as a guest, you gotta actually be open minded to take that shit. You know, you had the midget back. Yes. Yeah, the, he's back. Yeah, like he dresses up like you. Yeah, man. That's um, his name is um, Gabriel, and um, he's smaller than uh, that that actor that played Mini Me. Damn, oh, smaller man. than Troy, huh? Smaller than Troy. You picked wow. that for up? Nah, man. He's a little rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, what, he, he, he's he's heavy for a little guy. Yeah, he's heavy, bro. Solid. But one thing about Gabriel is that that fool the hardcore cholo too back in the days. Oh, I've never heard of that. Though. Yeah, the, like a, the first time I saw Gabriel, that little person, was at the Laugh Factory. I got off stage, and there was a bunch of dudes from San Fernando Valley there, and um, there were all, all these cholos. And then a, fuck, a fight started outside, and one of the bigger homies picks up little Gabriel and puts him on top of his shoulder, bro, the way the way Groot puts up that little <laughs> raccoon, and he ran, <laughs> dog. <laughs> I thought you were going to... Tell me he put him in a slingshot and fucking Dude, shot hilarious. him at these motherfuckers. Uh, <laughs> weapon. Like Angry Birds? We used him at the weapon. <laughs> fucking <laughs> shot him at those motherfuckers. Who's your homie right there? They call him Cannonball, bro. <laughs> they, call him can <laughs> they call him the Cannon. <laughs> little Jugger, Gabriel Knott. <laughs> they call him Little Missile. <laughs> <laughs> little Missile. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh Charlie, there you go, the little warhead. <laughs> we just we just gave a rapper a new name. I know, right? Uh, little you think Miss. You like that, like in a shorter amount of time, because you're that small. Yeah, he has kids too. <laughs> like, no, I'm saying because you say he's like pretty old, but like, but it's, it's like, I wonder how long it took him to get that small. Like, is it a short amount of time? Hey, there's some little people that are ripped the fuck out. Because he says he's like a little piedra, bro. Like, I know what he means by that. It's like when you get a heavy ass fish. He's um, <laughs> very in shape. <laughs> yeah, bro. Like when you go fishing and you pull up like a strong fish, and you're like, how hard could fishing be? And then you're like, that shit's all muscle. All muscle, yeah. bro. All muscle. Yeah, fuck yeah. Dunk that please. Hey, how how good did it feel to get back on stage and start rocking shit again? <laughs> when I got back on stage, were you, at, were you nervous at all? I was nervous because I haven't performed in so long and I don't know if I could... um. If the, if the material was gonna work or how the crowd was gonna respond, respond. My first show was in Oklahoma City and they were, um, I don't know. They took it they, they, like different crowds. Are, different you know, crowds, like right? Oklahoma City was closed, but the comedy club was open to only a hundred people. Hmm. Right next door, they have the um, a concert hall called the Criterion. And 300 people, no mask, sold out show to see a, a country singer named Cody Wilson. And bro, this guy had a bus, the merch bus and the equipment bus during full blown pandemic, COVID-19. He was out there rocking it. And he's like, he didn't, and he like, who? like, where is he performing at? <laughs> yeah. Like, because everywhere I went was closed. Everywhere you were going was closed. Yeah. There was nothing open. You, you know, for for me, I was a little nervous. Only to, you know, <laughs> only because, only because, you, again, you don't know how the crowd's going to receive it after all this this time that there's not been any shows and yeah. shit like that. Or, you know, are people going to be afraid to get wild and, like, you know, just turn it up like they, like normal, right? But, once the song starts, I'm, I'm good, you know. And then I see the the interaction there. But I imagine with with comedy, I mean, it's that's a whole different thing, because you're 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 like the whole shit is for impact, line for line. And some people like I, I'm sure you you got you got this too, because in hip hop or music it happens, right? You go to one city, 
<laughs> and it's fucking wild. Like the energy is crazy. And then you go to another city and they're a little bit mellow. They they took the show and they processed it and they might have liked it. And they might even comment like, yo, that was the funniest shit I ever saw or that was the best show I ever saw. But when you see the energy that they gave for it, you're like, well, what show were you talking about? Because it didn't seem like, oh, I hate that. It's crazy, but it's it, people enjoy it in their own their own way, I guess. Now you want to tell that person, yeah, go tell the rest of the people that. No, who, <laughs> yeah, tell the other ninety nine mother. Tell my eyes that. <laughs> hey, do you find it hard harder to do shows in front of a, a bigger group of people or a small group of people, like a thousand to a hundred? What what do you, what do you feel like, or is it the same? For me, it's harder to perform in a place that seats five hundred. And there's 30 people inside. Right. <laughs> it's paid <laughs> practice. Because I don't like to know. I don't. I like to watch. I like to do a show where I don't notice people going to the bathroom. Right. No. Yeah. 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 Do you ever fuck with people that get up and try to go to the bathroom? Bro, I do, man. But when I do a small show like that, <laughs> where there's seats 200 and there's 50 people there, I fucking lie to the audience, bro. <laughs> I go up on stage and go, man, thank you very much for coming out. Thank you for coming out to the second show, man. <laughs> Thank you for coming out to the seven o'clock second show, man. The first show at five o'clock was fucking sold out. It was crazy. It was packed. Like we were turning people away. I said, why? Let them come to the second show. We have no tickets sold yet. <laughs> that's a good run right there. But that's from years of empty rooms, bro. <laughs> you got you to know it, right? So I, I tell them there's a second show. They go, you guys are lucky, man. I, I have just 15 t-shirts to sell now. Yeah. <laughs> the overhead is low. And if the joke doesn't work, I say, oh, man, that joke got me a blowjob backstage at the first show. <laughs> <laughs> Did it? <laughs> no. This show, that show got an applause break in the last show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah. I don't even know we're going to have a third show. Yeah. <laughs> but it's really Thursday, 7 o'clock show in Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> you can hear the place next door. Hey, it's a t you know, you could test new material right then. <laughs> oh, that's what I do, bro. When it's empty, that's when I practice my enunciation. <laughs> <laughs> if somebody says, I didn't hear it, I repeat it. <laughs> oh, man. If they heckle me, I let them, bro. I can't have one person angry at me in a small show. Yeah, right? <laughs> Just let them have it. <laughs> but yeah. sometimes, man, those shows that are small, and if you put 100% into it, you're gonna feel a hundred percent good after the at the yeah. end of the show. Yeah. Cause I've seen comedians, you know, or like like fucking uh Prince. But I know like I know contracts now, you know, I know that people are not divas yeah. when they ask for stuff. Like when you saw that MTV show and that one band wanted um red MMs. Oh, only red MMs. But see, I thought about it, okay, he would be the diva, but now that I have a writer. I see it as they read the contract now. Right. They're reading, I, the, they're contract. reading the contract. Yeah. Because yeah. I said red Eminem's and they fucking went to go look for them and separated them. Because last time I was here, I asked for for a uh, Cuervo Blue and they brought yellow. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, or, were, they were reading. Or you asked for Johnny Walker Blue and they brought black. Yeah. Which is three hundred dollars cheaper, right? And then they st they still charge you for that shit as a regular blue. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So little things like that you learn as the more you perform. And I say, all right, Van Halen, I know what he did. Yeah. yeah. Have you asked for anything like that? Nah. Like if it's I've got gotten fruit, vegan food, I'll sock somebody. I've I gotten want... other people's writer by mistake, and I know what they ask for. So I want oh, damn. All enchiladas and nothing else. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Then they go over there, they get they get they bring hormels. <laughs> yeah, they bring you hormel lynchy right? Yeah. So, like I, so what was it, what was in somebody else's where you're like this? Like um I know that um this comedian thing is um the guy from uh from the um the 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 trailer trash of comedy, what they call the white collar? What 
Is it Trader Trash from Comedy? Is it, is it uh, the white it's blue collar? Co- yeah, it's those four guys, right? Yeah. Is it it's the Larry. Get her done. Larry, the cable uh, guy. Uh, Foxworthy? Uh, Jeff, Fox, uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff Foxworthy. Yeah. And fuck, I can't remember. That's funny, bro. I ran into Ron Jeff. Ron White. Yeah. Ron White. I ran into Jeff Foxworthy at the airport. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> so I took a photo, a picture of him. And then I tagged, I wrote. If you know one Mexican only, you might be a redneck. <laughs> <laughs> if you're friends with only one Mexican at work, you might be a redneck. So, <laughs> um, those were good. So, um, <laughs> so one of those guys on his contract, he has to have Johnny Walker blue. He has to have a twelve piece chicken wing from Hooters and he has to have a six pack of Bud Light and a whole big bottle of El Patron Reposada Tequila. So he's got a few drinks on his shit. Yeah. He likes, he likes to party. Huh? Yeah. Get her done. Was that him? I was like, if I had to take a guess, I'm like, that sounds like him because Ron White seems like he'll get the most expensive bottle. Yeah, because yeah, that's, no, no, yeah. that's the Johnny Walker Blue. Now he has his own his own uh, whiskey so he don't need that writer. Oh, damn. Yeah. Yeah, they seem like Johnny Walker Blue yeah. drinkers to me. It's because that thing that's smacks. A, it's like drinking Bushmills. Well, yeah, like, well, yeah. that's that's expensive. That's me, the top bro, of the line right there. Me, I keep it Johnny simple, Walker. bro. Peanut butter and jelly. That's All it. right. Yeah. I loaf of bread and peanut butter and jelly, and everybody can have some. You don't ask for no crazy <laughs> vegan fruit, stuff? Fruits, yeah. Vegan cookies, they got them. Cream cheese with bagels. Um, so water. So, so let me explain to these <laughs> folks what the writer is. Right, the writer is what the artist in any entertainment um, shit you could think of gets in their dressing room. Consists of drinks, snacks, foods, and other things. If you know, you ask for wild shit on the writer. Like sometimes, you know, we've asked for crack weed. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Well, you know, hey. Yeah, you know, for resale. <laughs> give, give Bobo no, a fucking but, thing and invite that shit. <laughs> Some motherfuckers ask for mushrooms and things, crazy things like this, right? I didn't know you could put that in a writer, though. Uh, you can, the you Blues can, Brothers, you white can, women and chicken. Yeah. <laughs> you, can tr- you can try to put crazy shit on the writer. <laughs> if the yeah. promoters and his people... <laughs> Or with the shits, you yep. might end up with some of that shit, you know, that n- normally doesn't go on a writer. Anyway, the writer is your wish list for your dressing room, but we call it a writer for some reason. Everybody has, it's like when you show up to work, you know, what do you need? I need my tools. Right. Yeah. I need, my, I need fuel. Yeah. To yeah. do the job. Some, I I've, I've read, I read some bro where they asked for, they asked you personally <laughs> it is not me i read this is from an actor you don't want people to look at him in the eye yeah a lo- you know what, what? a lot of a lot of um a lot of musicians do that bullshit oh, too. Yeah. But, but they wouldn't uh, wouldn't allow anyone that worked for him to look them in the eye the oh, staff yeah, yeah the, like, their staff okay yeah. so it, it's like if you it's like booked, some pimp shit you get booked somewhere like felipe you're doing stand up and then you write on the writer please don't have none of your employees looking me in the eye yeah yeah that's, that's but that's, it's, it's it's the employees that are on the low level of the fucking yeah. ladder on the on the first three rungs. Like Those a usher, yeah, like a what? Yeah, like a usher. Yeah, yeah. Not the artist usher, yeah. like a usher. Like a popcorn oh. usher. And you think yeah. of someone within the height of five foot five or five foot three? I know who you're talking. About. Yep. Because they want you. Because you get to you get to. Because they want you to look down at them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. basically it. Yeah. I mean, shit. <laughs> Some some of them will even have their video angles shot up like this to make them look big, and and some actors will not allow guys to be too much taller than them so they don't look. You know what I mean? So like the villain doesn't look. Oh, like dude, I just noticed something right now. You you said that about height. Right. When I was watching Empire, my uh, a friend of, a friend of my well, not a friend but you know you a, a comedian. Yeah. He says hello to me, all right? If, <laughs> if I re- email him, one of his assistant responses right away. But um, <laughs> D. Ray Davis, who has 
amazing <coughs> green eyes, you know? Right. Now, you know they're green too, right? Yeah. They have to. You're Dr. Green Thumb. But uh, his eyes are <coughs> fucking green. And so is the lead actor, yeah. right? Yeah, Ter Terrence Howard. So D, D. Ray Davis is in an episode of Empire with brown eyes. What? They made him wear contacts. They made him make contacts so that two guys weren't because the, they eyes. can't have two black people with black green eyes. Ter <laughs> Terrence Howard couldn't have another dude with green eyes. Uh, wow. I can't have another pretty motherfucker. Listen, my. Okay. <laughs> that's good. Keep going. That's hey, good. I was going to, but I lost it. Uh, I fucked it up. Listen, right? I can't have two green eyes and words on the fucking show. You know that's what he said. Okay. Tell me that. Name, but I was like, tell oh. me you don't have green eyes, man. <laughs> or sorry, Terrence. Or maybe they can't. Or around. maybe the network couldn't see a brother. With green eyes, be crazy, cause I know a lot of them. Well, it's 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 <laughs> like you said at the beginning, right? Like some of the main actors in some of these action movies, when they're short guys, the villain has to be their height. They won't allow him to be too big, like that. Fool. I was I was uh, doing this thing with um the um the the that tour that George Lopez was doing with Eddie Griffin, D.L. Hughley. And, and the late Charlie Murphy. Rest in peace. And um, those, these fools were talking, but I was over here on the side, you know, but I was listening, but I was not in the conversation. And um, they were all laughing because Eddie Griffin, I guess he had met uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah. And it, the first thing that fool asked her was, how many apple boxes was Bruce Lee standing on when he was fighting them in the game of death? Yeah. Cause Bruce Lee's short, right? Yeah, he's short. And fucking Kareem was seven foot two. two. Yeah. And they were at about the same height in that movie. Wow. So I want to know how far was Kareem standing away from him? In the close-up shots, yeah. But when they did the wide, you saw that they that he was significantly <laughs> shorter. I didn't know he was that short. Oh yeah, he's like yeah. probably like five six, five seven, right? Was Ray taller than him? No. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it like death? depth observation yeah right like, like the way that they work the cameras yeah, and the made them level at in certain angles but when you go to the wide you could see the difference in yeah. in height and then when you just see um kareem's big old footprint on his chest i mean it's it's pretty much on his whole upper torso that, that shit was crazy. How many boxes did he set? Did he answer them? No, he didn't ask for them. But he walked away. He just oh. laughed and walked away? I don't know. He or probably he didn't laugh. Walk. From watching the movie, I think he just walked away. Yeah. Oh, I've been watching that um, NBA show. Oh, right. Yeah. He, he's not going to answer a question like that because Bruce was his guy. Yeah. And he ain't trying to diminish anything that people think of Bruce, I think. And maybe he just didn't appreciate the question. Who knows? I don't know. It's funny how you say that about um, on the rider and all that stuff. Cause I, I've, I've done shows where some comics don't want to use another work with another comedian because they sound alike or they talk about the same stuff or they are the same genre. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get that. Like I remember. Do, they do that with groups? Sorry, I didn't mean to yeah, interrupt. No, no. You know, like. Music promoters, nah, they look at it like if you can sell the tickets and people fuck with you, they'll even mix, you know, some shit. Sometimes that doesn't work, though. You know, like if you get like, a, let's just say a trap style yeah. um, artist to a traditional like 90s artist and you put that together, unless you put that sh shit together right, it's it doesn't necessarily work out. You know what I mean? Like reggae fans where it's all the same kind of like stuff. Well, you know, hey, look, it, it's it's people put on mixed genre shit and some people put on themed um, theme type of um, events and whatnot. So when you got a reggae festival, it's primarily reggae. They might throw other shit in there, you know, like some hip hop or some some rock or R&B or something like that, that that they might feel might add to the vibe. But. 90% of the artists on that are what that vibe is. But when you go to a mix genre, it's a little bit everything. I probably comedy is the same thing. Sometimes it's like you got a bunch of mixed sort of genres, like in terms of what the, the comedians are talking about. And then you got comedians that got a similar get down. Yeah. 
So, you know, maybe promoters don't want to have too many of this the same guys because it might get redundant, you know, like, oh, well, you know, I just saw a set <coughs> and this motherfucker set was almost like this guy's, like the same premise, I guess, you know what I mean? Yeah, man, like n nowadays, like, they have like a Christian comedian now. Huh. Damn, that's the thing. How does yeah. that work? Oh, they, oh yeah. They, they just, they're labeled clean comedy. And they're like the biggest perverts in comedy. Huh. Like oh, you look it. around, bro, every, go down the list of comedians that have been locked up, comedians that have assaulted women, it has never been a dirty comic. It's always been a clean cut comedian. For example, like, I want to mention his name, but we all know who, right. you know what I mean? And, um, and there was another comedian back in the days, this guy only did colleges, only performing colleges. And that fool, and they, that fool was raping people. Hmm. And when they caught him, all they did was go back to his comedy schedule. And, it, and, and it was listen a, to all a, that shit. Yeah. His dates, bro. They're his dates were... Wow. They, they found a rape victim at every date he was at. Wow. His name was Vince Champ. Mm. Wow. That's crazy. Look. And he's see. a clean comedian. Never said pussy. Never said fuck. Never said shit. But he was doing all that shit in real life. That was a mask. The clean, the clean shit was a mask. Me, I talk about coke. I talk about eating <laughs> ass and walking around with a big shit stain all night. But <coughs> I don't do that shit in real life. Or oh, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Wear hats now. It, it, but it's crazy though because like they're looking at everything, <laughs> right? So like they do the same thing to to um to rap, <laughs> right? If if they think you had something to do with some shit, they go listen to your music and try to tie that in. Yeah, you know, oh, that's and, right. And use it against you, you know what I mean? If they're investigating you and shit like that. So I guess it's the same thing now with, with anybody in an entertainment. How do they separate that from what you talk about on stage, which is, you know, very good um, lyrics and music with a hip hop beat? And then they use that against you in a courtroom. How could they do that? Is that, a, is that a well, if if what you said in your story matches up with some shit they're investigating, and you fucking pretty much snitched on yourself, yeah, absolutely. Um, through the song by telling people what you did, if it was factual, I'm gonna just put on my back. <laughs> I thought he was asleep. I got COVID on my hair. <laughs> That, you know, they're using all that little shit. <laughs> the look on your face was everything, bro. <laughs> the look like... DJ throw up miners over here. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. You good? Hey, I'm great. All right. Uh, <laughs> look at goggles over here. Eh? <laughs> I, you know, I thought about wearing goggles up in here because, you know, when it gets really, really fucking thick, it's hard to see. Like it's so hot and smoky in here. Like, like if we had like two chicks here, they wanted to fuck. I would have said, "Not nah, here, bitch." <laughs> yeah, no, the same thing. Yeah, there's not enough room in here. Well, if you get like a five foot two woman that weighs 105, yeah, okay, yeah, you, know, you might be right there. I can't argue with but you. But the kind of chicks I meet, bro. Well, we have some roof. You just take her leg out of here. Well, in the next car, it's coming because the the other smoke box is coming soon. It's a little bit bigger, so there's a little bit more room. You know what I'm saying? That one probably can get away with all the, you know, shit. Man, you hey, you got any gigs coming up that you're looking forward yes, to? Yes, I'm going to be <clears throat> in Omaha, Nebraska at the waiting room <laughs> July 16th. That's this week, if this, this thing airs. And then um, next week, I'll be in Portland, Oregon at Helium's Comedy Club. I'll be at um, Levity Live in Oxnard, Ontario Improv, Irvine Improv, Jacksonville, Florida. I need people in Jacksonville, Florida. Where's so if you are a redneck out there, if you know some Mexicans, invite them. Hey, where's your favorite place you like to, to, to rock? You know, like that gives you the best energy. <laughs> Los Angeles, California. The backyard. Backyard right here. Hell yeah. Hey, do you get that thing <laughs> when you do a gig? Girl, it's like you're doing it at, at home here, but it's like it's it's stressful. Like I like I find like you know when we do gigs here in, in the hometown, 
it's great it's fun we know that people are going to come represent but the hours leading up to that gig is a pain in the ass the hours leading up to a show for cypress hill must be the most hardest two hours of anything because there's people that are texting him yep <laughs> i'm outside the door i can't get in <laughs> or people that uh where do i go or people that would text you like this where should i park? felipe we just found out you're in brea we were eating outside at denny's but it's sold out what can you do i said i don't even i don't even respond yeah come because that, that i don't start a conversation with him or i'm get this one hey man you want to have dinner before the show and that's it because i know what that is you want to have dinner before the show and then give us free tickets i'm yeah. down hey wow. I, I would get like the shit like hey bro i know i haven't you know we haven't seen each other in, in a year or two but like I was wondering if I could get 10 tickets to the show tonight. Uh, <laughs> hey, fuck out of here. Or crazy? worse. <laughs> or the worst thing they could do. They can't get a hold of you. So they go call Ezo's cousin first. Oh, oh yeah. I get a hold of Ezo first. Hey, you know what I used to do, Felipe? On, on the days of the show, like after a while, I got, you know, to a point where I stopped, you know, like answering my phone on this day. And, I decided me and a couple of homies would do this because they were in bands and shit. And whenever they'd play the hometown, the same shit would happen. So what we would do is leave fucking false fucking messages on our answering machines. Like we picked up the phone on you. You know, like, hey, what's up? Oh yeah, hey, well, how you doing? And they'd be responding, yeah, yeah, I'm just kicking it, you know. And they'd be like fucking conversating with the with the fucking answering machine, not knowing Damn. that I left the fucking records. Oh, you must have called for tickets. They're a ticket master, bitch. Beep. Beep. And I got so many people, bro. They stopped calling me on this fucking day now. Like if they don't tell me like a week before, you know, asked out. It's funny, man. Like, um, cause we're we're both from California. Yeah. And. There's nowhere, else, there's nowhere else for us to go, you know. I'm sorry, man, but yeah. the people that leave California and say that they were treated real bad, they only lived in a 1.5 mile radius. Yep. They probably only lived there. Like, if you came from another state and you park your, your broke-ass Midwestern ass on Hollywood and Vine and you live in an apartment there, your whole existence in LA would be struggling to pay for that apartment. True that. Yeah. Struggling to it's survive. Expensive. And then those three hours apartment. that you have free time in LA, some other asshole from the Midwest treats you like shit. So now you hate LA. Yeah. But you never been to Southgate. No. Nope. You never been to fucking Crenshaw. You never met anybody outside of that little area of Hollywood and Vine. Of course you're gonna hate LA. There's a lot of homeless people in that area. Yeah. There's a lot of homeless people everywhere. But man, if you would have just got an apartment and cut a hay, <laughs> yeah, cut and just hay. made your, and then took a bus Ooh. to Hollywood, you would have been here longer. Yeah. yeah, true that. That that's that's the hidden knowledge that motherfuckers don't know. They think Hollywood is the representation of what California is. It's they, a small representation, and they think by just moving into Hollywood or on Sunset and Highland. Somebody's gonna plug you out of that area. Nah, man. I see a lot of motherfuckers making out of Highland Park right now. Yeah. yeah. Hey, and, 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 and what you said is true, though. Like, if, if you go to these other communities outside of Hollywood in this, this, that part of Los Angeles, you'll actually meet motherfuckers that were born and raised here, not other people that give you the impression that. that California yeah. or LA is fucked up because that's a big truth right there you know what I mean and and, and I'll tell you what it, for as fucked up as it might be in terms of our taxes here because it is bad it's, it's bad fucking horrible um a lot of motherfuckers still come and move here because there ain't no place like this hell yeah man if anybody that's being priced out of Austin comes to LA yeah. Give other states a like if you're living in Manhattan, <laughs> Manhattan, and you ha you can't afford it no more. Yeah, it's expensive. Hollywood and Vine is great for you because you could afford Hollywood and Vine. Yeah. But if you're living in Dayton, Ohio, Jacksonville, Florida, you're living in fucking 
fucking Windsor, Canada. And then you're gonna take that cheap, cheap ass money, and you're gonna go to Hollywood and Vine. Yeah, bro, you're gonna live with a struggle. That's the struggle. You're gonna be a drug dealer. You're gonna, you're gonna think about having an OnlyFans. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna go to OnlyFans. <laughs> but see, <Damn>. <laughs> so, be real. Grew up in LA. He you know he knows in LA. I grew up in LA. For us not to make it is harder than a motherfucker who moved out here, didn't make it, and went back home. Yeah. Cause we gotta see the motherfuckers every day. That's right. We gotta <laughs> live here with this shit. We gotta see him at the mall. Ah, there he is. <laughs> there he goes. I knew Felipe, you were not gonna be funny, motherfucker. We told you you <laughs> were <a> shit. <laughs> uh, for real? Uh, no, I know. Ah, you know how you, bro, do. your rise were nothing. <laughs> oh, they tell you. Oh, they, oh those tell you. Oh, they, they, they'll tell you. <coughs> oh, man, I was in a band too back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They kicked me out because I spoke PCP, but you know, they, <laughs> when, I, when I was making everybody laugh backstage, everybody was all happy. <laughs> Not on the back end. But then I started taking speakers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, man. Yeah. You you got to deal. Like, if, yeah, if you, <laughs> if you, if you are from here, a lot of pressure. And, and you fail. Indeed, you're right here at home, and motherfuckers don't let you forget that. That's and that is the reality of it. Especially the motherfuckers that told you you couldn't in the first place. Yeah. Fortunately, we shit on those that told us we couldn't, and we did it, and we're doing it. So you know, um, they're over there falling off roofs now. Yeah. That's right. You don't let no one tell you you can't do it, but be realistic too. Like he said, right? Like that's that's the, the the shit that no one thinks about. Like when you come from these other places, living in that fucking place that he's talking about, that shit. Unless you come from some money, is a struggle right there. Especially trying to uh, quote unquote make it, as they fucking say. You know, that's real shit right there. Yeah, man. No one talks about it, but that's... It's expensive to live over there. Fuck yeah. Even even in the smallest of apartments. It's like the same, similar to Manhattan, right? <laughs> if you fucking have a, a fucking spot in Manhattan, it's a box for a whole lot of fucking money, and you better have a good job to keep that box. Good job, man. You better be making money to keep that box. Especially today especially today and you know that that's great advice you know telling the 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 aspiring motherfuckers that want to come and try to make it look be realistic yeah man you know if you ain't the biggest motherfucker in your small town don't be coming out to a big ass town and compete with a lot of big motherfuckers yeah work on the craft and then learn how to hold cables bro <laughs> I don't give a fuck who you are. If you know how to wrap cable and put cables back together, there's a job for you out here, man. Yep. And the people start noticing you, then little, while, little by little, you start throwing a little mixtape on the side. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but that that is real spit, though. Like, <laughs> you might have to get a job till you get the job you want. And that's, and that's, that's life. You're gonna have to get a, a side gig that you may not like till you get the gig you like. And that's life. Especially if you're trying to be in entertainment. Yeah, man. I mean, you know how many motherfuckers come down here and used to like wait, wait tables and you know, do do jobs like that till they got a fucking part that changed their lives or, or a, a, a shot that changed their shit. But till then, that's the struggle. See, I used to work at Dodger Stadium making hot dogs <coughs> and doing comedy on the side. But then I had to quit that job because um, Charles DePoy was taking half. I said, fuck, this shit ain't worth it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, no. But yeah. when that happened, though, I said, bro, I got to do comedy full time. Because I get paid under the table and this shit. I think it was a great choice. I think, you know, hot dog vendor at, at the Dodger Stadium, comedian. Comedian. Oh, comedian. Yeah. yeah, shit. And it's turning into other shit, you know what I'm saying? You're that's an actor now. Podcaster. Know. That's right, podcaster, actor. I'm in a movie on, on Amazon right now. <coughs> Got, um, Seventh and Union. Seventh and Union. Omar Chaparro. 
Oh, I'm gonna have to check that out now that you fucking said the boxing one. Yeah. What are you watching right now on on these uh, streaming services? You watching anything? Oh, I'm watching um, fuck. Uh, I'm watching um, Working Moms. Working Moms. <laughs> it's a Canadian show, bro. Okay. It's fucking hilarious, and it starts off with all them breastfeeding, and they show everything. All right. <laughs> I like how you mentioned that. <laughs> hey. <laughs> But the whole show's funny. Hey, look, check out this show called The Boys on Amazon Prime. It's about Ooh. it's about some fucked up superheroes. Oh, I like that superhero, the one that breastfeeds. Oh yeah, that then you know that's the one. Hey, bro, from the first season to to this one that's out now, like the the current season, Ooh. shit is crazy. You got this show, man, on HBO Max. It's a British show. <laughs> it's fucking good. It's called The Baby. The Baby? Uh-huh. Yeah, you, you saw it? No, I've seen the I've heard, of, I've heard of it, but I was like, I didn't, I didn't know It's about the it. little evil ass white baby, man. And that motherfucker is evil, dog. You want to throw that motherfucker in the ocean. <laughs> but, like, but he won't die. You want to throw him in the slingshot like little homie and fuck it, send him off. Cannonball. Angry, Cannonball too. Angry birds that fool. <laughs> Oh yeah, what else do I watch? Oh, <coughs> I, I watch this show on Amazon. No Netflix, Marginal. Marginal. It's in uh, in Spanish, bro. It's uh, um they're they're Argentinian. Ezone's got his first break. He's he's gonna be doing a show called Virginal. Ah, <laughs> uh, what? What? Virginal. Oh wow. <laughs> What you get in the back end? Oh, I don't know yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, was, there was some jokes there that could have flipped right there, but you know they didn't. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> it's coming out on Best Flicks. Best Flicks. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I want. Man, you would watch porno, though? Anybody here? Yep. Yeah. You guys are lying. I watch I mean, it so I much. Real, I watch it so much, bro, <laughs> that I don't masturbate to the regular <laughs> porn no more, bro. All right. I masturbate to the bloopers. You got uh. to... <laughs> Bro, you got to watch porno bloopers. Porno bloopers. Next time you go to X, X Video, X, uh, X and X, or Pornhub, quotes, quotes in the middle. Bloopers. Bloopers. And they show you like stuff like when a guy put in the ass by mistake oops ah! or, <laughs> or the girl's giving the guy a rim job and he farts in her face ah! and then these two black <laughs> these two black dudes are in a gang gang and they're whatever is mad because he hasn't got a turn <laughs> hey man hey. turn into a sword fight <laughs> you bogart <laughs> oh man the bloopers up. I mean, you had to figure it was coming. I saw one man where a girl had just a torso, bro. Just, like she had no legs, bro. Oh, man, yeah. And just arms. Man. That's crazy. And people are into crazy it, shit. You know, and it was a Star Wars theme, bro. Oh, who was she? So Leia? she don't want to know, bro. Jawa. R2-D2. Oh, oh r 2 d 2 Oh, man. Trash can. Okay. The hot trash can? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> oh, man. Michael Mark D2 never had a girl we're about to fuck. Ezone's gonna go check that site right now oh, once sure. we get out of the car. That sounds pretty disturbing. Which one? The, 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 the just the torso? Yeah, bro. Bloopers, bro. Porn bloopers. Also, you can look for bodybuilders and you get like these chicks. Who are like massive bodybuilders and they're doing porn with skinny ass weak fools, dog. Damn. They're on top of him, we like fucking them up. <laughs> and they're like, she, she has them like this, but like a man eating her crotch. <laughs> She's choking them off, like this. <laughs> but they're skinny ass fools, dog. <laughs> like small ass dude with big, with three legs. <laughs> oh, man. What that does for the imagination. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, man. I want to thank you, Felipe, for coming. Thank to you. The smoke box and rocking with us once again, man. I lost 10 pounds in here. Right on. Me too. I needed it. 
You know what I'm saying? Um, let them know where they can find you. Hey, what's up, fool? Philippeworld.com. Philippe Esparza. That's right. Can't even talk. Can't, can't tell with my man, Felipe Esparza. <laughs> Look at my joint melted. Hey, it happens. It gets hot in here. Uh, make sure you uh, subscribe <laughs> to the channel. Leave a comment. <laughs> like this shit. Share it out. On um, the behalf of the squad, C minus E zone, Felipe and myself. Um, stay smoking. No boof. Spread love and uh, positivity. And that's been another smoke box. Yeah, what? another smoke box. Key line.